What about Burnsville? What about Marshall? Why don't you ever talk about Mars Hill? What about Spruce Pine? Hi, this is Elena Kavrigin with Nesting Dolls Realty, powered by EXP Realty here in Asheville, North Carolina. If this is your first time on my channel and you want to know everything about what it's like to live, breathe, work, play in Asheville and in the Asheville area, you need to hit that subscribe button and tap a little bell to get notified every time I make a new video. Now, I know I haven't been here in a while, <laughs> but my team and I were still boots on the ground, helping dozens of people relocate to the Asheville area. So if you're one of those, if you need help figuring out if this is the right area for you, if you are relocated and you need help, feel free to reach out to us. Our contact information is right here. We got your back when relocating to the Asheville area. So by popular demand, in this video, I will be talking about towns north of Asheville. And there's quite a few of them. There's quite a few towns that actually have downtowns. So you really get this small town feel. They're cute, they're beautiful. They offer a lot of the same things that Asheville has to offer. For example, views and mountains and, you know, clean water and all those great outdoors and stuff like that. But in some ways, they will be quite opposite. Well, let me take it back. Pretty much everything outside of Asheville will be opposite of Asheville in a few different ways. Uh, for example, towns north of Asheville, just like towns east, west, or south of Asheville, will offer a more traditional, um, conservative lifestyle you're not gonna get a whiff of patchouli in towns north of Asheville. Although, <laughs> I think it is changing slowly. All those areas, and I think I talked about that in my previous videos, a lot of these areas outside of Asheville are kind of getting infiltrated <laughs> in a good way. I don't know, maybe, hopefully, I don't know. But uh, people who seem to be true Ashevillians, you know, they fit that Asheville lifestyle, either cannot afford to stay in Asheville because Asheville is getting, like, it's getting out of, out of hand. Especially this past two years, it just, it's, it, it, it went up in prices on houses and rent prices, just, it's crazy. Asheville has always been, uh, has always had a higher cost of living. And now it's not an exception. So anyways, a lot of people who, like I said, fit that typical Asheville lifestyle cannot afford to stay in Asheville or what they want, they cannot find for their money. So a lot of people move away, move outside of Asheville because again, it, it, all those areas offer the same type of outdoors, nature, views, but for a lot less money. And I wish I could say, unlike Asheville, but rather in this case, it is even more so or even worse than Asheville. Towns north of Asheville do not have a lot of opportunities for career because most of the businesses are either small businesses, fast food restaurants, grocery stores, farming and stuff like that. Uh, but not a whole lot of opportunities for people to build their career. Unless, of course, you work from home, you just need internet and you're good to go, you can be anywhere. So that does not <laughs> apply to you. All right, so let's take a look at the map. The first town north of Asheville, and I actually already covered it in my previous videos. I'm gonna put a link in the description to one of a couple of those videos where I talked about Riverville, North Carolina. Don't go there just, just yet. You'll, you'll be able to come back there and take a look at it. Just stay with me for now. So Riverville, North Carolina, downtown to downtown, it is gonna be the closest town to Asheville. About 10 minutes, well, depending on traffic, <laughs> our infamous traffic. So it's about 10 minutes to downtown Asheville. It's got this very quaint, very cute, main street type of downtown that is lined with galleries, little stores, little local stores, little local restaurants that are also very, very good. 
and you know just some family owned businesses and then outside of downtown Riverville you go get into either some small communities golf course community there with more uh, you know I guess, I guess you can say luxury homes and then if you look up on the mountains you'll see a lot more communities up on the mountains some of them uh, luxury communities some of them just regular communities a lot of farmland a lot of land that's been in some families for generations so it's it's a good mix Waverville uh, considered by many a bedroom community for Asheville so a lot of people live in Waverville or Woodfin and commute to work to Asheville some other areas even more north of Asheville start kind of claiming that title to be a bedroom community for Asheville you know again it's because people are moving in all the different directions from Asheville you still get a lot of benefits of being close to Asheville, but you don't have to pay the price tag that Asheville now has. By the way, median sales price in Weaverville is about five and a quarter. I know it's still a, a lot of money, it's high, but it's a little bit less than Asheville and you get more property for, for the money. So there's that. If you live in Weaverville, you pretty much have all the amenities available to you in Weaverville without having to go to Asheville except for a hospital. Hospital uh, you would have to go to Asheville but Mission Hospital is probably I want to say well depending on where in Weaverville right downtown from downtown it's probably 15-20 minutes so not too far but outside of that Weaverville has uh, quite a few big box stores uh, Walmart, Lowe's, I think they got Hobby Lobby. According to 2021 data, population of Riverville was right under 5,000 people. I have a feeling it is going to be right at or even above 5,000 people right now because we've seen a huge influx of people moving to the area in the past, just in the past two years. Next, if you hop on I-26 and start moving north, the next town that has a downtown that you will hit will be Mars Hill. Mars Hill is best known because it is a home to Mars Hill University. Mars Hill University is a four-year liberal arts university and it's the campus is adjacent and right pretty much right in downtown Mars Hill. The houses that line the Main Street and downtown uh, Mars Hill resemble the architecture of the campus buildings of the university. And, you know, the fact that it has a university kind of brings a more youthful vibe to the whole city. Well, city is not probably the right word town the population is about 2,000 people in Mars Hill downtown is if you visit downtown is where it's all happening outside of downtown it can be quite spread out again because of the terrain uh, mountains hills you'll see a lot of you know farms farmland rolling hills if you live in Mars Hill, you would have to go to Waverville or Asheville to go to a big box store. Uh, Mars Hill has its own Ingalls, which is one of the local grocery store chain stores. It's pretty much in every neighborhood, in every part of Asheville and surrounding towns, and it's in several different other states. So uh, they have a grocery store there, they have a CVS pharmacy, but that's about it. A lot of other very local specialized type of stores. And honestly, it doesn't look like and sounds like that they want any big stores, big box stores there. Not, not a lot of flat land to build this massive store with a big ass, excuse me, <laughs> with a big parking lot. Uh, that's how, People like it over there. They like to keep it small and intimate and close-knit and without having to have all these franchises. People do not move to places like Mars Hill, Marshall, Hot Springs to have all the conveniences at their fingertips. People go there to for a different lifestyle, let's just say. 
a slightly different lifestyle or quite a bit different lifestyle. It's to have peace and quiet, to be closer to nature, to be closer to kind of our roots in a way where farming and sustainability is not uh, this trend <laughs> that people are uh, jumping on in the last decade, but that's how people live there for, I don't know, generations, centuries. So that's the best I can describe it. Every sales price in Mars Hill is in the mid 400s. So a lot better the farther you go from Asheville. Again, you can get more for your money. Next one on the map and kind of next one that will make sense to visit if you are going that way north of Asheville would be Marshall. You can actually get to Marshall a couple of different ways from Asheville, from the Asheville area either through Mars Hill. If you visit in Mars Hill, then you just turn left and you just kind of follow um, along and you'll get to Marshall. Or you can take Leicester, uh, which is a community, a town that's kind of northwest of Asheville. You can go through Leicester. It's a long and windy road type of trip, but if you go slow, you're not going to get too car sick. <laughs> And I promise you will enjoy the scenery because sometimes you just never know. You drive on these mountain roads and the next turn may open up this amazing view with a valley and views, layered mountains in the distance. Enjoy it. Take your time because it's going to be about an hour uh, if you take it from through Leicester. I love Marshall. It is super cute. It lays along... French Broad River, bridge that connects downtown with other communities in uh, Marshall. Beautiful view, just going through that bridge towards downtown and you see the town, little town center and the, the main street that kind of hugs uh, the French Broad River or maybe French Broad River hugs it. <laughs> Offers a lot of similar um, things that people might be looking for in when they come into Western North Carolina, such as views, great outdoors, local specialized stores and coffee shops and little diners and restaurants. Not as many, of course, as in Asheville, but they have their spots and they are amazing. Highly recommend. So Marshall, if you take the easier way, it's going to take you about 30 minutes from downtown Asheville. The population is about half of Mars Hill. It's even smaller, it, although downtown seems uh, to be bigger or grander. Of course, Mars Hill has its university. So, uh, you know, they're, they're different. Mars Hill is a university town. Marshall is known for its arts. Arts, art galleries and arts and crafts flourish in Marshall. In fact, a lot of artists start moving away from Asheville to Marshall because, let's just face it, uh, artists or a lot of artists, especially when they're just starting, they're not known to be wealthy. <laughs> and those studios to work at can be quite pricey in Asheville. So a lot of artists find a better deal in Marshall. And so, Marshall has this little community of artists that is, of course, smaller than in Asheville, but that's what Marshall is known for. So if you are into arts, arts and crafts, if you do any kind of, if you are any kind of artist, uh, I think Marshall would be a town to check out. Again, it's a, it's a really small town, like you don't have really much going on there. People don't move there to be close to, you know, all the amenities and <laughs> be able to uh, door dash their order from their favorite sushi restaurant. They go there for a more laid back, quaint, maybe family focused, um, sustainability focused type of lifestyle. So again, all towns north of Asheville are more about just gonna leave me alone, let me do my thing, let me buy some land, a larger piece of property where I can grow my produce, have chickens, whatnot, and I don't have to deal with all the actual BS. <laughs> 
Um, again, to each their own. I myself live in Nashville and I, and I love it, but I can see how I can see both sides of the debate. Uh, Great Outdoors is available pretty much everywhere around Asheville. In Asheville, around Asheville, you don't have to go far, so you can find it everywhere. And one of the best examples of that would be Wolf Lodge Ski Area or Ski Resort that is actually in Mars Hill. Let's say it's about 25 30 minutes from downtown Asheville or from Asheville a lot of people like it it's not our favorite we prefer to drive a little farther to Cataluchi ski resort uh it's bigger we like that um area a lot more but it's right there it's available they get a lot more snow because they are at higher elevation so it, it's a great area uh, to live to raise family to have you know to have your farm farmland do whatever you want type of thing and of course a little disclaimer a little side note and i know i already covered that in other videos that do whatever you want concept and zoning also known as open use it can sound great on paper and for the most part it's it's nice right but uh, when you can do whatever you want it means your neighbor can do whatever they want as well and it is not uncommon <laughs> that in Western North Carolina, you will see a junkyard or something that doesn't look nice, a property that's abandoned, that's just like trashed, poor looking. And by poor looking, I mean not kept well, just completely trashed, maybe trailer park. Again, again, nothing against trailer parks. It's it just open use allows you and your neighbor do whatever you want. So it comes with its pros and cons. Just keep that in mind. Now moving north and a little bit northwest, there's a town that's called Hot Springs. So Hot Springs is actually uh, outside the fact that it's got hot springs that are which are healing mineral springs and it's a great huge attraction for locals and tourists hot springs is actually an appalachian 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 oh gosh uh, <laughs> trail town and what i mean by this is that appalachian trail goes through hot springs and naturally it attracts a lot of travelers a lot of hikers to it hot springs is kind of like a pit stop for all the hikers who hike and who go through Appalachian Trail. People can find lodging and kind of stay there for the night and then continue their journey on. Springs population is half of Marshall. <laughs> so we're moving in the direction of even less populated towns in Western North Carolina. Hot Springs is about an hour from Asheville. I mean, it really feels like you are in the middle of nowhere. We visited there this past summer. I think it was summer or early fall. And it felt like time just froze. Nobody was out and about. Maybe a couple of cars there. They had a few, they have a few stores there, a few local stores, like a hardware store and stuff like that. But, um, not a whole lot going on. They have a visitor center, so that's good. Hot Springs is one of those in the middle of nowhere type of towns. Never been to Hot Springs in Hot Springs <laughs> yet. I don't know, I don't know what, I'm, what I've been doing, but a lot of people like it. It's just, you know, kind of like hot tubs filled with that um, spring water. Uh, it's supposed to be very healing and very, very good for you and your health. Average sales price in Hot Springs is a little over mid 300s. So again, uh, it's a lot more affordable to live there, but a lot of times you think, well, who would want to live there? Because nearest grocery store would be, I think 40 minutes from Hot Springs. Hospital is an hour in Asheville. There's no Walmart, no Target, no Lowe's. Like I said, there's uh, some local hardware stores in downtown on that main street, um, just maybe a few shops and stores, but that's about it. Again, people do not move there to have everything at their fingertips. They move there to be left alone and do what they want to do with their life. <laughs> 
All right, now let's go into a slightly opposite direction. Let's go northeast, still kind of north of Asheville, but in opposite direction of Hot Springs and all that. So from I-26, you take exit nine, and instead of going uh, left and go towards Mars Hill, Marshall and all that, you're gonna turn right and go towards Burnsville. I think Burnsville is one of my favorite, most favorite areas and towns. Um, in in our whole region. It is so easy to get there. The drive is easy, not stressful. I mean, it's a joy. <laughs> it's not congested and it, you just enjoy beautiful views as you drive. So what not to love. Now, Burnsville is about downtown to downtown. It's probably about 50 minutes. Depends on how fast you drive. Although, if you ever visit Burnsville, I recommend you not speed because those state troopers, they are known for catching people in both directions. They kind of team tag and catch people. So don't speed, just respect uh, the speed limits. Go at a reasonable speed, at a suggested speed, and you'll be just fine. But Burnsville is about 50 minutes from downtown Asheville. Population is about 1600. Another small southern town and that's what it feels like. They have a little center, uh, not just like one main street type of downtown, but they have a little center square, I guess, with a little um, grassy area and a few stores, uh, city hall and stuff like that around the circle and then main main street type of area with more stores, breweries, coffee shops. And by coffee shops, like it's just one or two. Majority of businesses or bigger businesses like grocery stores go along the highway that actually takes you to Burnsville. They have Ingle. Outside of that, Burnsville would be as opposite from Asheville as it can be. <laughs> it is known for its artistic vibe. What I think about Burnsville, it just, it's very rural, country-like. You see, as you drive, I mean, you see cow pastures on both sides, a lot more traditional way of living, a lot more conservative. Living off of your land is not a trendy topic. It's That's what the, these people have been doing. I think the landscape of Burnsville is changing slowly because a lot of people choose Burnsville instead of Asheville. So they start going and buying properties in Burnsville. 10, 20 years from now, it's gonna be slightly different, but again, it's typical Southern, small Southern town where people are super friendly, but it's not an easy process to earn, really earn that trust. Every sales price in Burnsville is up by 400, so it's a little higher than uh, Marshall. A lot of people choose to go there, so supply and demand. Interesting thing about towns north of Asheville is that a lot of them have fiber internet available. They had it available before we here in Asheville had it. I think that's also why all those little towns uh, become a huge attraction to a lot of people. Keep going east, just keep following that same highway that took you to Burnsville and the next town that you'll hit that has a downtown would be Spruce Pine. Spruce Pine downtown actually has two main streets. Again, small town of about 2,000 people, maybe more now because again, there was a lot of people moving in the past two years, but small town feel. Actually, Spruce Pine is known as a mineral city because it's got one of the richest deposits of gems and minerals and it's got a few mining spots. I am yet to go and visit them. <laughs> I just kind of always on the go, only go there if I am showing a property. But that's what it's known for. That's the biggest attraction outside of, again, outdoors and stuff like that. Mountain lifestyle, amazing views, mountain settings is what people go there for. And if you are in Spruce Pine, you are even closer to the eastern part. So you might as well go through kind of eastern part of Western North Carolina and come back to Asheville. It's going to be, or you can hit a parkway. It's going to take you 
a lot longer to go through Parkway. It's about, I think, two hours to go through Parkway back to Asheville. But the entrance to the Parkway is right there. I promise you, you're not going to regret it. The views are absolutely amazing. They have so many overlooks. I myself, when I go there, I've seen those overlooks dozens of times. But every time I stop, I take pictures, I take selfies. <laughs> it is so breathtaking. You're not going to regret it. So if you go and visit Burnsville and Spruce Pine, you can go one way through I-26 and go through Burnsville and then from Spruce Pine hop on the parkway. Hey, maybe you would want to visit Little Switzerland too. It's a little town, no downtown, but it's a little town. Also, it's there's a re little resort there. It's closed, like the, all the shops, a little town, little resort is closed right now during winter months, but in summertime, you can go there, you can actually have lunch on the open terrace. You don't have to stay at the resort, but you can, anybody can go and have lunch. Make a, a day trip out of it. Don't be rushed because everything is spread out. You would want to have time to check things out, to stop, maybe have grab lunch and whatnot, look at some stores. Maybe you will even catch a festival during summer months. Pretty much every one of those towns has their own festivals during warm months. They are not maybe as known as some of the festivals that we have here in Asheville, um, but they are as unique and cute. They have their themes are more about this tight-knit community than being famous, world famous. Average sales price in Spruce Pine is a little under mid-300s. I think this price metric is diluted by a lot of um, more affordable, maybe like mobile home type of properties and stuff like that. So there's a lot of that, but definitely it's going to be a lot more affordable than Asheville. That is why people move there as long as you have internet and that area tends to have a good internet. So you see how much time it takes to describe just a few towns. That is why I never included all of them in that one video about towns around Asheville. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to follow along, if you want to get notified about new videos that I release, you need to subscribe, hit the little bell to get notified about any upcoming videos. I am going to go live with one of our agents who actually specializes in North Asheville and towns north of Asheville. We're going to go live here on YouTube a week from now, from the release of this video. And we're going to answer any and all of your questions that you might have. I'm going to make a post where you're going to be able to see the announcement for the live video, but think about questions, bring them to the live and, or put them in the comments right here. Watch some more videos that I previously released, ask questions, reach out. If you need help relocating to the actual area, my team and I will be happy to help.